Talk to me about the importance or lack of importance when it comes to fasted exercise, fasted cardio versus fed cardio. And are there any biological sex differences that would make fasted cardio more or less suitable for a woman? This seems to have come out of nowhere, frankly, this messaging, because we have data in women. We have data from 2013 and 2014 testing this in women where they were training fed or training fasted and body composition changes were similar. Paper came out, I forget if it was this, I think it was this year, earlier this year, where they were training, doing resistance training fed or fasted over a 12-week period and there were no differences in muscle growth or strength gains over time. So it comes down to, from my perspective, just practically speaking, is personal preference. Some people feel better eating before they train. Other people experience GI issues if they eat too close to a workout. And if you're somebody who gets up to train really early in the morning, then maybe you don't eat and and that's okay. Or you might experiment with both and, and find that one works better for you or not. But I think the circumstances under which the fueling pre-workout are going to be important is if you're doing you know, very long endurance training or maybe you're doing two workouts a day or we are we're focused on a particular performance metric that we know we perform better with some fuel. So it's not to say that it's fueling couldn't help under certain circumstances, but to make the blanket statement that you shouldn't or you should be doing one or the other because of your sex, we don't have the data. I think the claim that I've I've seen and where I think this confuses women is that there is an idea out there that's being pushed that if a woman specifically trains in a fasted state, that this is kind of no bueno for her metabolism and it's going to damage her insulin sensitivity, it's going to damage her appetite and it's going to, to lead to her having increased body fat levels, right? So my, my question is that study that you looked at that compared a fasted exercise and to fed exercise and then was looking at muscle mass and I think body fat, were they looking at body composition as well? Yeah, so we have three yeah. that, that, that right. fall under that category. If you take, if you take you know, woman A and woman B and one, woman A is doing fasted, exercise, be it strength training or cardio, woman B is eating before that exercise, but across the 24-hour period, both woman A and woman B are consuming like the same relative number of calories and protein. What you're saying is there's no difference for the outcomes that we care about being muscle mass and body fat. Correct. And this is where we have to be careful about any kind of acute measure. So 10, 15 years ago, people got really excited about fasted training because they were doing these acute measures and saying, oh, I'm oxidizing more fat. I'm using more fat as fuel. So shouldn't this translate to long-term fat loss over time? And all the bodybuilders started doing fasted cardio thinking, you know, this is going to help me lose fat for my bodybuilding prep. And it doesn't work that way because just, just because you – are oxidizing more fat during that workout or even during the hour post-workout, depending on, on the type of exercise we're talking about. It doesn't translate into long-term fat loss because when we think about long-term fat loss, then we need, need to think about the overall calories consumed and energy expended over time. And so we, we need to be really cautious about making any of these extrapolations based on not only that mechanistic data or the animal data, but also those acute measures. So to put this one to bed, it's, it's not true that fasted exercise leads to greater fat storage or to an increased appetite that would then drive higher energy intake over the day. It's not true. And so what what is your take-home advice here to a woman who's trying to work out whether she should fuel and with what before a morning workout? I think you should exercise regardless. So if you're someone who prefers to eat and you have time to eat, then eat. 
if you're somebody who doesn't feel very well, if you eat right before the gym, then eat afterwards. That's completely fine. I think this narrative is sort of assuming that, you know, we wake up in the morning and we're just on empty. Like we didn't eat the day before. We have no stored glycogen. We have nothing to fuel this workout. I mean, that's just, just not true. So for the average person doing your 30, 45 hour long workout at the gym, it's it doesn't matter. You can do whatever you prefer. And that's great because we have more options. I recently ran my full labs through Function Health, and I have to say the results were eye-opening. Turns out my ApoB was higher than ideal, probably thanks to a little too much coconut yogurt. I also found out I was slightly low in copper, something that I would have never suspected without testing. On the flip side, my biological age came back 13.3 years younger than my actual age, a calculation based on the work of aging researcher Dr. Morgan Levine. So all in all, I've got a few tweaks to make to optimize my lipids and nutrient status, but overall my blood work says I'm doing pretty well. That's what I love about function. You get access to over 160 biomarkers covering everything from hormones and inflammation to nutrients, toxins, cardiovascular risk, and more. And all your results are housed in one beautiful platform, all tracked over time. Once you get your results, you can make informed changes before small issues become big ones. To get started, head to functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill. The first 1000 people get a $100 credit toward their membership. That's functionhealth.com forward slash Simon Hill.